Hey everybody, it's Scott with another Tool Thought. Uh, I got a request for a video uh, from one of my viewers that wanted me to talk about um, different types of drilling uh, apparatus, I guess. Uh, so this is my uh, attempt to um, accommodate him. So he... He's been having a problem <clears throat> with his paddle bits. I guess he's um, burning them up and dulling them really quickly. And I told him, you know, the key to drilling is only go as fast as you need to to get the job done in a timely and efficient manner, you know. Uh, apparently, he's going way too fast because, uh, you know, there's a saying that goes speed kills, and that applies here. The faster you drill, the more heat you're going to put into the bit and uh, the faster it's gonna dull. I mean, uh, I guess he was using these here daredevils um, and burning them up. Now, I don't know if he's been using the kind with the auger point, you know, the self-feeding uh, point on them or not, but the fact that it has a self-feeding point on it is a dead giveaway that you are not supposed to drill that on high speed. Uh, these are real nice. Uh, they've got their place in my arsenal um, But I don't prefer this type um, Here's another type. It's also a Bosch And it doesn't have the self-feeding tip on it. That's just a standard uh, You know paddle bit and then it's got the The little I don't know crowns or teeth on it the ones I prefer though Are the DeWalt's believe it or not and these seem to last a really long time. If you notice, they don't have those points on them. Uh, they, they just have a flat cutting edge, and they do a real nice job. Um, so, you know, there's that. It's, um, <clears throat> it's all about speeds and feeds. Uh, I got a colleague that just told me today that an old machinist told him the larger the cutting area, sorry the slower you have to go uh, when drilling. You know, it's kind of obvious to, to, to me and him, and, you know, I guess I just uh, forgot somewhere down the line that somebody had to teach me that. Um, for example, here's a, here's a Forstner type bit. So the cutting edge is all of these teeth and this, and this one's been used and abused. These really, can kick your butt. I mean, there's a lot of kickback on them if you hit anything, any nails or anything embedded in the wood. There's a lot of surface area going on there. Uh, and, you know, they make a beautiful clean hole. But uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, I don't know, I guess backlash when you're drilling. Um, and there's a lot, you know, a danger of kickback on them. Uh, you know, you got your auger bits or your, your, uh, your ship augers, as they're called. Um, these also have a self-feeding tip. Uh, they make a really raggedy hole. We usually only use these on rough ends. Um, you know, as you can see here, I've got a long one that I use to go through, you know, double, triple, quadruple stack, two by fours. If you want, a, a, you know, a rough hole in uh, deep material, this is your guy. Um, and we got the hole saw. I bloody hate hole saws. Uh, they cut real slow. You got to stop and pull the plug out of them. Um, you know, they clog up a lot, which generates heat and it slows the cutting action. Um, so these are my least favorite. My new favorite is the Milwaukee Big Hog. And what this is, is it's a hole saw, but it's supercharged. It's got carbide teeth. There's very little cutting area. You still have to use it at slow speeds because it's a large diameter. But there is very little kickback on it when you're using it in a regular drill. And notice how the slot is there and it's real easy to pull the plug out. Makes a really nice hole. Um, I guess I could demonstrate for you what I'm talking about. So what I use mostly, if I can, is the Milwaukee whole hog. Uh, in the immortal words of one of my favorite movie characters, 
Mr. Ferris Bueller. This thing is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend you pick one up. But it's got the quick chuck on it, which will accept, you know, hole saw arbors and the augers, the uh, ship augers chuck right in there as well. So let's move the camera and I'll do some demonstrating for you. Hopefully this thing won't fall again, fellas. Uh, let's see if I can lock it in somehow. Mm, that's not gonna work. There we go. Well, maybe not. All right, so <clears throat> this thing, it looks intimidating to some people, but it's triple geared, so there's really zero kickback on it. Um, you add in, you know, for drilling large diameter holes, we used to do all augers until Milwaukee came out with these. I'm sorry, we used to do all Forstners for large diameter holes, and they'll kick you. Uh, this one will not, though. I'll demonstrate. Wham. Zero kickback on a hole that large. Uh, they're expensive, but they're worth it. Um, so then, let's compare that to a hole saw. And we use a standard, you know, quarter steel. You, you won't get anywhere near that kind of speed out of this option. Uh-oh. <laughs> See, it's just not a good uh, quick option. You know, they clog up. And, uh, you know, they're a pain. But there is a way to speed that up. So I noticed a good 15 years ago, on accident, we were roughing in a really old farmhouse. It was being remodeled. And, uh, you know, the Milwaukee whole hogs, or big hogs that I just showed you, were a long ways off. So the only way to get uh, good sized holes like this to pass a large trunk of wires through a floor cap or a ceiling cap was to uh, either hole saw or use Forstners. And, Milwaukee hadn't come out with its own Forstners yet, too, so uh, back then, so you had to use basically crappy uh, inferior steel ones. As soon as you hit a hole, or I mean a, a nail embedded in the wood, it was over for those things. So we were using hole saws. Um, so if you notice, I did all that drilling in about the same amount of time that I blew right through with the big hog there, and I only got down, I don't know, maybe an eighth of an inch. But if you take a paddle bit and you drill in the track, it provides a clean out for all that material that's clogging up the cutting action to fall through. Um, again, it's not going to be as quick as a as a big hog from Milwaukee, but watch. Again, it takes a while, but it's it's a lot faster. I mean, I don't know if you guys want me to uh, drill all the way through here, but it's 
really shouldn't be going this fast with a, a hole this, you know, this size. But it makes a huge difference. I'd still be at that hole. I'd still be at that hole if I hadn't drilled that clean out hole in the track along there. So that's just a little tip to help you uh, get some things done. If you, if you have to use a hole saw, you know, I really hate the hole saw. <laughs> uh, it's good for steel and stuff like that, but uh, then you're talking, you know, you need to oil it to keep it cool. The whole point of speeds and feeds is to keep your cutting tool, your bit, your hole saw, your auger, your forstner, cool. Um, when they get hot, they lose their, you know, their temper or their tempering, and then the, the steel starts to dull, and you're going to start making more heat, which is going to lead to quicker dulling, and uh, that's how your bits get dull. So, uh, another nice thing with these things, with uh, these DeWalt paddle bits is the fact that you can make a really nice hole without any blowout. Say you're drilling into some finished millwork or something in somebody's house. And you need a clean hole on either side of where you're drilling. Uh, I'm going to use a st standard 2x4 to demonstrate this. All right, <clears throat> now that's a reasonably clean hole, you know, which is what you're looking for. And you can either put a sacrificial piece up against this and, you know, keep it from blowing out that way, or notice where the little point's coming through. Then you just drill. side wham bam you got a nice reasonably clean hole it works better in mill work trust me you don't want to go flying through there at high speed either but you, you get the idea um, so that's kind of my knowledge on on drilling speeds and feeds the larger diameter hole the long, larger cutting surface the slower you need to be going if you're starting to generate heat and you're trying to save a bit, you know, slow down, cool it off. You could even dunk it in water to bring the temperature back down. You know, the, the cooler you keep your steel, the longer she's going to cut for you. Uh, I believe that is going to cover it, all his questions. Um, you guys have any questions? Uh, you know, you know where to find me. Finally hit a thousand subscribers. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you. I'm gonna be uh, having a nice uh, thousand subscriber giveaway. There'll be a video to announce that. Uh, Keenan, your stuff's on the way. Sorry it's taken so long. I've been in a little bit of a mess here, but uh, that's all straightened out. Um, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Please watch the ads. It helps us all out, all us YouTubers. Um, and sorry for the bad camera work, guys, but this is pretty much just a, you know, an organic channel, non-fancy. I don't even like to edit unless I have to. So y'all have a good day, and uh, thanks for watching.